that's left for SGE. I don't really think this clockwork is really going to change anything. Like, it makes melee heroes slightly worse, but Monkey King, as we all know, isn't really a, a melee hero. <laughs> he cheats there, he, he cheats quite a bit, and it is going to be another really, really big physical tool from this SG esports side, and a hero that you can apply just so much pressure with. Like, I mean, we listed Juggernaut. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Hey guys, welcome back to Dota Boom Channel. South America final grand grand final to cross to PSL1 Gamburg. Okay, guys, battle begin started game. Something Ooh. worth noting that we've seen SGE play quite a few games and yeah, they've been they've been doing pretty well. Obviously, they're in the grand finals, but if there's something that they have struggled with it's actually closing the game. I feel like one too many times, specifically for SGE, they're at like 15k, 20k net lead, they have complete control of the map, and then they just start doing really stupid things and start feeding, and then, I mean, they, they most of the time end up winning anyway, but it's just really stressful to watch from, from the casting seat, because you're like, guys, what are you doing? You're playing so well. Stop playing terribly all of a sudden. So it is going to be SGE perhaps with a little bit of hesitation about actually going up high ground. Their high ground push isn't exactly super strong, so they have to win the team fights outside the base. They're going up against Batrider. It's always difficult to push high ground up against that hero. But uh, SG right now, they also do have kind of another option here. Send Laposa towards the safe lane and send this Monkey King with Lich to match up against the Anti-Mage. And that should uh, actually not happen. But that would have been actually pretty sweet. Just try to counter and slow down that Anti-Mage from the get-go. Looks like... With the TPs, with the scouts, yeah, they're just gonna settle for this. Theo and PTT, man fighting just a little bit, everyone really just fighting it out, but uh, no one should be going down here, and it looks like the lanes might actually be, ooh, a little bit of a shift. anti Image is in fact prepping to go for that mid lane versus Invoker, so again, trying to greet out a little bit here for Kaka. Seconds to battle. See where that one. See that last one? Where'd it go? You see it? I have no idea. You didn't really see much, I guess, since we didn't see it. So it is, is going to be an ADR invoker, and this guy is pretty insane on this hero. But up against, again, this dual lane. Not really the lane where he's going to be feeling super pressured. As long as he has some sort of vision in this area, if you look at this mid lane, dire observers covering most of not all of the access points that a clockwork would take. It means he should not really be dying here. He can't really return fire, though. That's a really big issue up against this lane. He's going to be taking, taking chip damage from the Dazzle. He can't really return that chip damage versus the Dazzle, or else Anti Mage will blink in. And he can't really ship out an Anti Mage either, simply because he has a 4 man shield, and though you may have Exhort level 1, you still don't have that much base damage. So. Right now, for this very early start, Taka is going to have a, a pretty nice start here in this mid lane. And 444 oh, is going to even take off this top river observer ward for ADR. Now that actually opens the door for Clockwork's rotations down the line. Dark light.
so sorry. Really lanes though where anyone can die. We already see Laposa forced to go for that spike carapace and is just gonna take a lot of right clicks. Of course, this is Nyx Assassin. High regen, high armor with four man shield and more tangos, so actually killing him off is not gonna be incredibly easy. But for right now, Masha is just happily farming this uh, mid lane, at least as much as he can. And four for four, throwing out a couple of those big heal bombs. The one with, I think, two other units already hit onto the invoker, and we do have PTT. Looking for the Beaver Knight. Almost gonna get in range, but uh, not quite ready to seal the deal on that courier. But still, he is rotating around. It is spotted, but there's a big difference between gank. An invoker and ganking an invoker and spirit breaker it is so much more meat you have to grind through he is gonna look to cut them off battery of thought will be split in the creep wave but they still get the poison on adr anti mage blinks forward and he's gonna be first but the sun strike still lands but asha's not taking much damage here again this anti mage very resistant to just these pure right clicks from sge and taka get on the board and it looks like with absolutely no punishment Double damage. He's going in. Sun strike. Oh, not enough. Arms for the dead. That was uh, probably worth it for Theo to end up making that trade. But since he has left the lane, we have ADR jumped in on by Masha and just torn to shreds. So level 1 Shadow Wave isn't really that much damage, but uh, it's enough when the Invoker is here all alone. And uh, it, it did seem like if SG Esports were ever going through the win this lane, like truly win it, it would require one hero to kind of camp out here with the Invoker, uh, at least until he gets level 4, level 5, and get a couple more points in that Exhort so he can kind of challenge from a range. But Dio rotating out towards that top lane. We got Bardino's Lich now rotating in, but uh, it may just be a little bit too late. I don't really think Lich on top lane was really needed as much as that additional hero was needed over in mid. And the Necrophos going down the bottom lane is going to be a really nice kill there for SGE. Gotta win these other side lanes if your anti mage matchup in mid is not working out. And uh, Nyx Assassin should have uh, you know, not a terrible matchup versus, again, just this Necrophos. The Clockwork and Dazzle have been not in the bottom lane at all. So Posa with a little bit of momentum can certainly shoot towards that level 6 marker. Even, even just not even level 6, like just more levels in general to get more mana burn. It does scale up really, really well, dropping 8 second cooldown every single time on a hero like Necrophos. If you're able to take him out of uh, that that uh, Death Pulse range with his mana pool or even that Ghost Shroud, then he's just a useless hero. Like He actually just doesn't do anything from there on out. Uh, it is very difficult to actually do, but sure, they're going to keep on laying in that pressure. I like this from SGE. Gotta go for the vulnerable hero. Posa has another Mango right now. I hate anime. He's gonna get bashed twice so far. Is trying to juke in the trees. Heartstopper Aura is ticking slowly though. They'll sun strike to see he's not going one way. And they'll corner him and kill him off. It was slow, it was grueling, but it's another kill on the Necrophos. In lots of napalm will kill off Expected. the monkey king. He jumped right in, but the damage wasn't quite enough. Jingu doesn't give quite enough life back, and the monkey king is gonna burn afterwards. 
That is a nice kill for the Batrider to take, but of course he dies first, so didn't really get all that much in the experience department. Just a little bit of gold after he died. But we're starting to see right now, Theo starting to step up his Spirit Breaker game. This guy plays this hero a lot, and we can see having now four kills worth of impact, and is going to maybe even set up for more. And looking for this rune is going to get it. And now in a man fight with the Dazzle, looking for a bash, gets one only so far. Dazzle's never going to win this by himself, but Dazzle does have backup coming in. Theo is just going to leave. And through the Ancients is going to be cut off maybe by the Clockwork. You know, Theo should be fine. Clockwork can't tango versus two heroes. Theo will get back after having jacked that bounty rune. Still Shadow Burn up towards top lane. Four pushing five. It's going to be now up against Phase Boots on the Monkey King. As well as uh, just, just more levels. Level 6 on Monkey King is an, an incredible level. I don't think he's going to get here. He might, because we've seen really weird Monkey King builds lately. But yeah, just another point. Balance Dragon on stun. We'll post it on the bottom lane in the meantime. Hog in by PTT. Frost Blast is going to kind of get cancelled here for the Impale, but it still lands. Although just barely with a big Vendetta hit. We'll get the kill. And the charge went towards I Hate Anime, so they could have maybe scythed the, the Nyx Assassin there. If the next post isn't perma stun. Not splitting the battery assault, so they can maybe actually get this kill. Theo has another charge. We'll push back DTT and the Dazzle. Start taunting his way out of there. You're gonna live, man. You gotta live with style. That was uh, very close to being bad there for SGE as they were letting the battery assault take onto only one hero, but again, still works out and still they're pressuring this Necrophos a hell of a lot. Yeah, the Anti Mage is still a problem in this mid lane, Masha, but ADR now at this point, level 6. Soul? Oh, Sunstrike. Well, would that have been enough? 280? Nah, it wouldn't have been enough anyway. Illusion! <laughs> the uh, Alacrity is up uh, on the Invoker as well, with all into Exhort, all into Wex, this Alacrity is pretty well balanced just for gunning out those right clicks on this Anti-Mage. No. Although ADR right now, and Dino both very low on mana, still will get in a lot of trouble here. Cogs go up, and the Invoker for sure is dead. He's the last. It sounded like last of me, but apparently I'm crazy. But the charge is still coming in now. Here comes Monkey. He's gonna jump right in and then leave. Don't want to tango with this Bat Rider. Firefly is everywhere. We'll have to sack the Invoker and get out. Invoker is gonna have what looks like is gonna be a, a pretty slow hand of Midas in this game. The Nyx Assassin is back on his bottom lane. Dazzle with the attempted jukes is gonna get away from the Impale. If he gets impaled, he definitely gets sunstruck. And now the Nyx Assassin has to try to get out of here. He's gonna spawn Carapace. There's still a Scythe and a Death Pulse, but it's not gonna be enough damage to kill off Laposa. He'll back off and has Shrine if needed. The charge is coming in. Baiting a little bit because Theo has arrived. 
Sun Strike, still not cast. Oh, he has Nether Strike now, and he gets an extra bash. The Impale, Nether Strike, Sun Strike is on the mark, but he's gonna get that Grave. Now the turn around onto Laposa, Scythe, no mana for a Scythe. He's still gonna go down to this Breaker as Laposa, once again, is gonna barely survive by the skin of his teeth. Now Theo going in for the Dazzle. There is a Clockwork here, though, and the Spirit Breaker cannot fight two heroes. He will back off safely, though, and the Necropost dying out for the fourth time. So uncharacteristic of Necropost in this patch to be this pre this pressured this early on. He's not really going to be all that dangerous. He needs to get a couple of these side kills. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Shadow Burn, almost getting jumped. Oh, we will get jumped as this Dazzle. That's what he was looking for before the post set. That exact combo. And man, is it easy to land. We get ADR a little bit of extra cash. Midas is right around the corner now for him. Shadow Burn's gonna drum up, looking for Bardino up towards the top. He's gonna grab the Lich. Fire is good against Ice, but the damage might not be enough. Boundless Strike is nowhere close. And they do cancel the charge in. That's gonna mean that he gets the kill, but can he actually escape afterwards, Theo? A lot of damage here, sticking in Napalm. Oh, great Impale from Laposa. Keeps PTT out of the fight, seals the deal on the Bat Riders. Now looking for more, charge back in, Battery Assault. Look, cancel the charge just on the tail end of it, but the jump in from the Monkey King with, of course, that Jingu and the big stick for the kill. We'll get Costa a double on this top lane. They maybe could have saved the Lich there, but you know what? I'm pretty sure they're not going to be upset about that. As you wanted that, Dazzle. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. There is another sun gank armed with this Nyx Assassin, but there's also a smoke at the same time. PTT Shadowburn from the side will have a really good angle onto ADR, who just now shows himself in lane. They're going to start charging it. They do not have enough mana for a Chain Frost. True Sight. Oh, the Cogs are actually not cooperating with them. The Chain Frost now crushing both of the health pools. Sun Strike and PTT will get the kill there. Shadowburn will try to fly away, but the Nether Strike will keep him in range. He rotates everyone here from SG Esports, but they save the Invoker. And looks like Lich had stick charges to get him to Game Frost. That was another attempt from Taka that's just gonna get mercilessly squashed by the SG side. And now Invoker has the Midas. Now he can just straight jungle. This is looking pretty troubling for Taka. It still needs to buy space for this anti mage, but the Necropost isn't really big enough to do that yet. Still, I think making that play there from Taka, making that movement is is still like the right thing to do. You're going for this drums build on the Bat Rider. You know that the Invoker has had you know maybe a perfect start, so you don't want to punish that even more. They'll find Theo up towards top lane. This is gonna be the first sight kill. Looks like it should be, it will be. He's down for a good 40 seconds there, but. Uh, yeah, the Mage is still farming. That, that's quite nice, actually. They, they do need a couple more of those, ideally on non-Spirit Breaker targets. But at this point, they'll take whatever they can get. However, at the same time, the host is going to find PTT. If Impale lands, I think PTT is just dead. There's a Monkey King here as well. Impale will land. Sunstrike? Oh, maybe split by the creep a little bit. They still have the Monkey King. They're trapped in the cogs. That's not really going to stall them up that much. So it's going to be another kill for this MK.
gonna go in. They are gonna get the tower denied. Now the Monkey King in a little bit of trouble. Takes a big kill bomb from the Dazzle. There's no Scythe here. They'll still get the kill with the Bat Rider, though. At the same time, the Posa got hookshot by PT. And they will be able to bring down two and get the tower denied. That was extremely well played by Taka, but elsewhere, their Antimage dies. As he was trying to cut the wave, I think, she gets charged. That is still a pretty big cost for Taka, but, man, denying that tower in and of itself is, is already a pretty big win with two... I can't imagine they're too upset about that exchange. Quick sprint. Coming in. Yo, is this is the clockwork. We'll back off with the charge, in fact, and there's no one who could really do anything about this. And damage is actually going to blink in. Does not have that battle fury yet. Now pushing 16 minutes. You know, maybe there's some consolation here that it is a mid lane anti-mage or dual lane anti-mage, so not really the, the most perfect protected farm in the world. Died once now, so Battle Fury you know, maybe is slightly delayed, but there's still going to be one of the slower Battle Furies that we've seen on this hero. Still, we see these aggressive hunting moves here for SG Esports. Theo is going to find a target in the Dazzle. Is there a Sun Strike ready? There is. And here it is. Charge in. Immediate Nether Strike, back into the Sun Strike. Perfect. Can he get out from Shadowburn? He doesn't have another charge for another five, and the Antimage is going to look to cut him off. There is a last here, and they'll use right clicks, right clicks, mana void, he's dead. The scales balanced. Radiant's tower has been denied. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Second tower denied from the Taka side. Those tower denies do hurt quite a bit, specifically for these lower net worth heroes on the SG Esports side, or at least in usually they will. The Lich, though, the Spirit Breaker, heroes that are usually really just flat broke are actually wealthy in this game. So yeah, they don't, they don't get extra wealth, which is, I guess, kind of nice, but man, Lich is already almost at a 4 staff 18 minutes in. He's actually got quite a lot of time to farm, and of course, Theo has been killing people all around the map, so he's been getting a lot of gold and kill gold himself, so it is still nice for them to get these tower denies, but uh, it isn't really going to... All this gold deficit coming out from these supports. SG, please tell me they don't get all three tier ones denied. That would suck. Uh, ADR's Radiant middle tower has fallen. Coin for me. Endurance rock. <laughs> Battle isn't over yet. No sight. Rock it on. I was gonna get nailed with the flare. Oh, Masha's back, but he also doesn't have any mana. Why, why, why doesn't anyone have any mana? Well, I guess we know the answer. It's the Nyx Assassin. He at least canceled that uh, Scythe mana on the Necrophose earlier in that fight. But that was a little bit greedy there from SG Esports. They, of course, found the Dazzle and could have easily killed the Dazzle if they actually just first thing sunstruck the Dazzle. Like, we saw that exact same kill between the uh, top and mid tier one, tier twos from the Taka side, and they, they have that same exact opportunity, literally the same scenario, and there's just no like, They tried to greet it out, give the Monkey King a little bit of love, and it's understandable, but Monkey King just short on that damage and you know if you, if you don't kill a dazzle instantly you may just not kill the dazzle at all especially when all that backup is coming in if you fight near that shrine so a little bit of over greed there from sge but that being said this invoker still has managed to get a lot of sun strike kills has been able to avoid a good amount of confrontation recently and now has his aghanim scepter complete so adr is really ramping up the threat level
Did that rider blink into that last fight? He has it now. I'm not sure if he did or if he just was able to firefly. I wasn't quite paying attention, but still, he's got the blink, which is obviously nice. It would, uh, pretty good answer. There are very few answers on the SGE Sports side. Only level 2 Spike Carapace right now, and that's not even a great response to initiation from the Bat Rider. Although he does have 4 Staff Spike Carapace. We do have that. And Balance Strike as well is not something you really want to use just for a small counter stun. The Bat Rider jumps in, so Taka are getting quite a bit going themselves, including this Necrophos now. Has had a really rough start, but seeing the net worth is, is not doing too bad for himself. Fourth place. Again, still not where he wants to be, but still is working with a lot of threat given this build, so SG Esports, uh, yeah, they're, they're slightly ahead right now, but they're still up against an Mage, and they can't really afford to forget that. Let this game drag on too long, and the Bat Riders Initiation, the Scythe, the Hookshot, like, all these tools are going to stack up really heavily in favor of Taka, and for SG, they're getting four staffs, which are, which are really good, but it does seem like this Monkey King just needs to get one more item, and then they need to start making some more aggressive plays. for the Battle Fury again this month. I feel like every single Monkey King game in this region is Battle Fury. I don't know if I like it. Most of the time it's Boots, Echo Saber, Desolator sometimes, you see quite often Diffusal Blades. Uh, if you need to, you get a Manta Style just to split out of a, a Global Silence or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not really sure if I've seen Battle Fury Monkey King in in any other region. Seems like it might just be like a thing. I could be wrong. A lot of Dota going on, obviously, but uh, it's definitely the minority build on a, on a global scale, at least in a majority build in this region. It does kind of let your Monkey King just kind of play like an Anti-Mage a little bit, but you're never really going to meet the farm of an Anti-Mage as Monkey King just with Battle Fury. You need to be able to get kills if you're really going to keep pace. Hand of Midas in the quick buy. It doesn't... Can you really get away with Midas here? Do they really want to play the slow economical game up against this? I mean, yeah, a, a Nyx Assassin with farm is, is kind of nice. But it does feel like once Taka hit like that critical mass point, three items on the Anti-Mage, maybe one more item on the Necrophos, a BKB or something like that, then it's like they'll, they'll just be able to just do anything they want. And there's not much Nyx Assassin can do about that with a Midas. So, I, again, I'm not really sure if playing long game is favorable for SG Esports. A million years of pause after a like 15 minute delayed game game one best of five please fix your internet issues now please there have been so many pauses in in this qualifier it has been ab absolutely ridiculous but there there is there's some rule for like pause duration I don't exactly know how much time but you only get so much time to pause See this thing floating around uh, right to the east of Dinfos? Is that a is that like a scythe that's on his guy that's like floating, or is that just on my screen? Uh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, that, that would make sense if you have a different terrain set up there, but, uh, yeah, looks like we're... I think Mosh is saying, guys, that's going to be the last pause. We're going to have really smooth best of five set for the rest of it. No more pauses, just nice, good Dota, consistently clean, no trash talk, no disagreeing with the admins, no delays. Yeah, there we go. Alright, we're finally back in. It's about time. Double four stabs up on the SG Esports side from the Lich as well as that next assassin. It does seem like it, it may be time to a little bit of a play here. At least keep searching with the Spirit Doesn't and mine. Assassin for some more Sunstrike kills. I know that I do very frequently underestimate the power of a late game invoker. That is something that still SG Esports have to rely on, but it does seem like uh, right now he's not quite ready to, to really get mixed up in the fights yet. Still needs one more item at least before he's actually ready to be truly involved. Uh, voluntarily involved. PTT is going to get jumped by three heroes, but the cogs go up, trapping two with the lasso onto the Nyx on the side. He found the strike, is going to get them a little bit of space, and the chain frost is out as well. PTT is going to get graved up and will drop in the end, but everyone else from Taka will make a clean escape. As it was, Taka coming in as 5, and SG Esports come in as 4, way too clumped up. It's going to be a 2 for 1 that's vastly going to favor the Taka side. That was just kind of a clustered positioning there for the SG Esports side. Like, if you're walking in as smoke, you should be looking to fan out a little bit, separate from the like the clockwork, but they walked right in. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Still got this invoker hanging around here. They've been a bait the first time that Taka were heading towards. Maybe they could have found him, but it'll be Laposa first to be found. He's in sentry range. There is dust here, so it's four staff not really gonna help him. Throws out an impale wide. It's a nice boundless strike again, but it's just being used as kind of like a bad mini stun. Chain Frost is bouncing through. Now Tornado will be thrown in as well as the Sun Strike onto Shadow Burn, popping the Bat Rider. Pasta does have a double damage rune. He's hunting for PTT. Nether Strike will keep it in range of the Monkey King, and the beatdown will commence. Invoker in the middle of the fight drops a rock onto the Necros, Deafening Blast there as well, but I hate anime does have a hood. Invoker's damage output not quite the level they need it to be. This time though, it is going to be a two for one in favor of SG Esports. They are actually able to bring everyone into the fight, at least anyone who wants to be there. Plus, you know, Monkey Cake double damage doesn't hurt. Endurance run. He is still pushing this bottom lane. In between that, uh, that tree dance, mobility, the fact you can just jump in. Two shot the creep wave. It is a lot of flash farm and a lot of consistent split push, but this is also where Taka are prepared, at least from the draft side of things. If they were here and they were willing to defend it, a bat rider would very easily be able to see the monkey king a flare. Uh, just aim it a little bit south of the creep wave instead of right on it. And you can also scout these south trees. Just throwing it right in the middle right now, but uh, this is not really a super safe position for monkey king. Shadowburn is coming in. With the blink, just with Firefly, that's a blink four second stun on a Monkey King who's on a tree. That is so incredibly dangerous. Shadowburn wandering in towards ADR. Boundless Strike is there, connecting onto two. 
with the Wukong's man and the Chain Frost. They're gonna try to slice the Invoker. They'll fall short in the damage part. Of course, that happened from ADR. He'll live for a little while longer, but finally pop in the Mana Void. Still the Chain Frost, though, bouncing through. Masha caught in the circle of monkeys. Will blink out of there just in time, though. And will survive. Theo looking for a charge is going to find it on the Anti Mage, but he has one more blink. Just enough mana for one more blink. And it will be a four for uh, three for one in favor of SGE Sports this time as they do use their invoker bait successfully, but perhaps not exactly as they would really like it. Still on this bottom lane, still shoving in a little bit. God, is going to run into what he really doesn't want to see. Go no, never mind. They just pass right through each other. That was so lucky from the Lich. Because there's no chance that he survives. Absolutely none versus this anti-mage. by an ob sentry combo. They do tornado out, throwing up a couple of dragons, bat rider, still up on the high ground. The kings are out, so that's kind of dire. They really don't want to get too close, but they're forming a nice little wall here of sentry wards. No real vision there. So the Nyx does wander over, not able to see him. Still, they've made a movement all the players up to this top lane, and now we'll just gun for this tier two. How can they go for a tier two of their own? They're really far away from this. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dazzle. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower has fallen. For Roche instead of bottom. Again, this push is essentially just Masha but this lane. Yeah, Anti Mage can eventually take some serious damage here at the structures, but the TP is now just back to the base. They should be able to defend up against the AM push. I'd like to see them send someone in. They're going to find PTP first, though. That is, I would say, just as good as the TPs now are going to commence. Tier 3, half HP, and Raposa will push back all the illusions, but with the Dixassin Street. I mean, they're gonna try to jump in, but Costos already grabs. The Aegis also has a BKB if needed. Shadowburn already used the Blink Dagger, so he can't continue the chase for initiation with no Force Staff. And ultimately, uh, Taka get half the, or not half, a uh, good three quarters of this tower's health pool on the bottom lane. But they lose a tier two for it, and they lose Roshan. Now the Monkey King has a double life. Kind of a desperate play there. I think they would rather have given it to ADR, but I'm pretty sure they're not gonna be too upset about it. So getting away with the clean. This Down on sorcery. Marginio does survive the anti mage. It's not a hasted anti mage like before, and it is Marginio close to allies, close to trying to get allies in. In the meantime, SG, they do actually go for this mixed assassin Midas 28 minutes in for you know, a, a pretty late Midas on, on an assassin, but still, we'll see if he's able to get any value off of this. And we'll see if those items that he gets off of this are actually going to be doing anything substantial in this game. Uh, it should be something like an Ags, um, Lincoln Spear also would be a really powerful item for the Nick Assassin to pick up right now. Right now, he's not really working with oh my God, that that GE still with 5k in the lead. Still have a really, really farmed Anti-Mage on the other end to deal with. Masha has been pretty free to do whatever he's really wanted to do in this game, although Posa is going to wander right by, uh, now sees him. 
Sunstrike with Vendetta can't quite get the kill. They definitely need Monkey King here as well. Or at least one other hero, but Monkey King's too far away. Yeah, I don't really know if this is gonna happen. And it's off! One more time with the Vendetta. Really all they're looking for right now. They're just trying to run into the Dazzle, run into the Clockwork, uh, heroes that have proven themselves to be fairly easy kills. I don't think Necrophos right now with 1700 HP, if they run into him, is really going to be a viable way to go. So yeah, the, the pool of possible hero kills is looking pretty, pretty slim here for Laposa, at least with just him. Again, if, if Theo was a little bit closer, if the Monkey King was jumping on the trees and they could Arcane kill almost power. any given hero right now still with this Aegis has now farmed a BKB still 10 seconds yeah, still 10 seconds and a diffusal blade on top of it so ghost shroud on the necrophos not going to be doing anything you're also able to purge off the weave of the dazzle which you know, may or may not make a huge difference it just makes you do more damage Radiance middle tower is under attack Not miss. I don't know. I don't know if that. Coin for me. I don't. I don't know if I can get X time back right now, guys. But we have to watch the anti mage first. Chain frost there with the impale. Sunstrike has been used as well on the creep wave though. Masha is still being charged by Theo, taunting it in, but he's gonna dodge with man style. Bound Strike still gonna land, and they'll interrupt the Wukong command with the lasso, but the spike character is gonna in in interrupt the initiation from Shadowburn as well. Oh, this fire is not gonna kill off Theo. He's gonna disengage. The urn is on him though. He will survive through that, and ultimately it's going to be a lot of spells committed for not all. Hopefully all the uh, issues are ironed out here. Oh, they snipe Theo though with the flare. He's slow on activating the shrine. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Coming in. There's uh, yeah, some something internety happened. I'm not exactly. Sure, if we just keep trying it without changing the way we try it, it will work eventually. That was pretty ambitious though to go for the animate with that. <laughs> He's got the Lincoln Spear. He wasn't really close to death. Haste! Being picked up. I'm clearly talking. It's getting. Picked up on OBS. We're streaming. Dazzle's dying. Grave is gonna run out in the worst possible time. Okay, we have to figure out. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Anything? Cause I am tabbed out and stuff, trying to fix stuff. They will find Masha. On the bottom lane with Theo, but charge is not really that good here. He is oh, really far away from the fight. They sight to kill off Laposa, but it does fail. He'll, he'll get the kill in the end and make a trade one for one. Now the charge coming in will slow down Masha as he attempts to go for the range racks in the bottom lane. ADR is five will push them back, but now it's gonna leave our you know kind of alone here on this middle lane. Many favors, so they will have to let the Lich go as well. Tier three though has been dropped as Masha still. Running around without ants. Till then, it's just me, guys. I know. By the way, the assassin gets uh, dropped over in that mid lane. Exchange the clockwork. Look, this here is up on the invoker and assassin. 1200 gold after that Midas pickup. Or. For the dead. Dazzle. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Illusion.
Quick sprint. <laughs> and then everything gets stopped working. But hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully I can hear you. There we go. I don't know what happened, but I do know what's, what they're going to try to do. Anti-Mage is going to get to the shrine. Tornado. Thank you. The wolves unfortunately misses. So, uh, yeah, it looks like we've resolved whatever issue that was. Run. Going towards nobody right now. Everyone from Kaka is on the other end of the map, and that's actually pretty bad for SG. First of all, the smoke's not going to run into anyone. Second of all, if they do come in, it's going to be right on top of ADR, and that is the worst case scenario. She might the BKB and Lincoln that he has. Still, it's a free tier 2 tower. It's very weak to begin with. We're losing shrines in the meantime, however. GE are are maybe looking to make something happen here. Shadowburn is, in fact, charged. TP coming in as well. Spearbreaker is invis, but there's a gem on the Batrider, so they know pretty much what's happening here. Oh, he's going to flame break, but the Nether Strike will still land. Masha is going to get interrupted out of his TP. They have to chase him through the trees now. He's going to blink up to the north, and I don't think anyone realizes that. Uh, they Sunstrike. I think that's to the south. Masha is now in lane. A quick glimpse can maybe give him a charge. That Lincoln Spear will block it, so no. Not gonna happen. They still kill off the Batrider. It's it's not all that bad. But uh, for sure this anti-mage, such a big thorn for SGE. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So maybe looking for a spike carapace off of the cleave in initiation. With a double damage rune to mage, you don't really want to mess around too much there. Theo is going to be in for Dazzle Hookshot gonna interrupt and the cog will once again be onto two. Theo in the post in a lot of trouble. The Sunstrike will completely split the wickets in the middle. And that will drop the next assassin. Chain Frost will be cast mostly onto PTT, really only on PTT. And now Costa uses his ultimate and BKB, just trying desperately to find his target. Can't really get on top of anyone. Not the Anti-Mage at least. Anti-Mage is going to make short work of the Spear Breaker. Now first hit Bash on the Monkey King, who is out of backup. Where's the help? The help has no mana. They'll man avoid the Monkey King. They'll chase him. Heart Stopper Aura. They will kill him. Yes, in mid-air actually. Style kill. Uh, yeah, it looks like Invoker ran out of mana in that fight, and they just couldn't get on the heroes that mattered. That was really clunky initiation there from SGE, and Kaka, they're able to not only win that engagement, but also secure themselves Roche, and maybe even more, as Shadowburn's gonna find the Lich. Poor Lich. <laughs> he knows he's dead. My flesh saws just the touch. Go away! has fallen. An ageless power is mine. Death and gold are linked. his inventory and actually not gonna go for a butterfly is gonna end up with an ethereal seems weird and for sure it is weird but i actually don't mind this selection that much like clearly right click damage wise anti-mage is unchallenged and butterfly would be nice i suppose but this item is gonna give means of breaking lincoln sphere for the abyssal blade next it's just gonna do a ton of damage if he just casts it on someone. It is, again, a little bit weird, and there's a variety of defusal blade on the SGE side, so like defensively, it's not really gonna be doing all that much, but Masha at this point, I think, can get like 
actually any item and, and this does make your manta style illusions insanely scary this gives you yeah 40 agility into those illusions as well so a little bit unorthodox but i think i actually like this at least for right now from the anti-mage she could always you know sell it and buy another butterfly later on he's rich Now, gonna ditch boots into his backpack. The mage is pretty much just Go ready to rock and roll. The rest of his team still not with the highest level of farm, but you don't really need a lot of farm on these heroes. The Necrophos, the Bat Rider, to be successful. In fact, Bat Rider has been doing pretty much his entire job with just these items that he has right now. If he doesn't get another item in for the rest of the game, that's not gonna be a big deal. Anti Mage, we get found. Not by Laposa, straight into Hail Sunstrike, but that's all the stun duration they have. The Cold Snap is going to be attempted there. The Chain Frost, yeah, those illusions, got him. People in doubt, but the Spirit Breaker is going to come in. They'll bump him back a little bit and then leave. I don't really know why they're trying to go for that kill. It doesn't seem like at all possible to do. He has Aegis also, so even if you do get it, like, you're not going to get it. My thanks. It kind of seems like they absolutely need an EMP to land on the anti mage. Right. Take him out by limiting his. Ape option with that blink. Mana burn, tornado, EMP. Probably won't quite do enough to prevent him from blinking. With a thousand mana, you have to grind with pretty nice regen because of that Lincoln Sphere and Battle Fury. So it's not pretty, but it does seem like that's like almost their only option as far as killing off Masha. Or at least maybe kill off all of Masha's friends and then leave him to last. There's, there's certainly a chance that that works out, but uh, you have to worry about this insanely powerful anti mage in the meantime. Weave goes up. Onto everyone from Taka, and they're ready to push in. Tornado EMP will be off the mark. Kill off the creep wave, but it'll be next to nothing for the Ant Mage. Blink straight in onto ADR. Four step one is gonna get him out, but the lasso is gonna catch immediately afterwards. He's still alive right now, but he can't actually get off the BKB. He'll immediately buy back, but Sandy Mage slap Floyd P. He goes straight for the Monkey King, even in the circle with the additional armor. It's still not enough. Masha gets a double kill godlike spree and still has not used the Aegis. Is there still cheese floating around? There is. Already the Invoker has bought back. Masha does not have another Abyssal Blade for right now, but he just needs to wait another 10 seconds. And if ADR goes down again, that is just GG. They cannot hold without their Invoker. Another Weave goes up. Shadowburn, oh, he's out of mana right now. So this Batrider is not going to be incredibly useful, but the jump up the Imperial Blade and the Abyssal Blade. All onto ADR. This time he does get his BKB up. With the Ice Wall, he'll try to deal with this anti mage, just hoping, praying for a bash, but he's actually disarmed. So he can't actually hit anything. The racks still stand strong. Tier 3 not even dropped yet, but Masha, any little bit stronger perhaps. Another 18 seconds until they can try that play onto ADR. Shadowburn still with no mana. He's actually going to blink in. I'm not really sure about that. Maybe he's just going to set up for a bait a little bit. ADR is going to get a force out. It's another Ice Wall. Safe for Masha. He's still gonna jump in. Masha is hunting down for Laposa. He's gonna have his Aegis reclaimed, and now's the big chance for SGE as Masha's out of mana. They stun him with the stick. They right click him, but now there's the. He's still losing mana. He has to fight his way out of this. It's not gonna happen. Masha is finally gonna go down. About time. And everyone else from Taka will fall back. Perfectly fine. The base took minimal damage, just half the HP off of that tower. for the dead. Quick sprint. Death and gold are linked. Do it with flair. Endurance run. 
time to move. Double damage! I think that will pretty easily silence anyone who thinks that Ethereal Blade and Mage is a clowny build because that worked pretty much perfectly there. Just at least a couple of times dealing that first combo on the Invoke in the post up Playing some games up towards top lane. And you may have to ask, you're tanky, but Scythe doesn't care. He literally just impaled by himself. No allies even remotely in the area. On a Necrophos, he could never kill anyway. And then ends up giving Necrophos more mana and more health than he started with. So, uh, that definitely wasn't the play. This Nick Assassin does not have gold for buyback after having bought that Aghanim Scepter. So, SG... I mean, they divert disaster once, but still, they have no buybacks. The anti mage, I guess, doesn't have a buyback either, but it's still just an absolute monster. So I'm pretty sure Taka wait another couple seconds for a lasso and try to look for another opportunity. Dark light. Ice armor on the tower, though, so that combined with the fact that Taka really pushed structures all that well. The Yank Mage he doesn't have a Desolator, nor is there an Assault Cuirass on the green side. In a jump in straight for ADR, though. Deafening Blast gonna push him in. Burst damage on the Yank Mage is not gonna be enough because of the Grave, but he's still actually taking a lot of damage even through the Grave. He can't blink out. They take down Masha. What the hell? It looks like that was not going to do it. But, oh, unfortunately, the Monkey King gets trapped in the trees. Ironic. They are still chasing in with your If you charge, someone is going to see the Necrophos. PTT is also going to get out of there. But, man, they, they deal with that Anti-Mage really, really well. That had to be like a, a cold snap or something after the Mantis style split. Really hard to see those effects in the middle of a fight like that, but that combined with you know maybe a little bit of Diffusal Blade, EMP mana drain, and he was alive for a pretty long time there, Anti Mage. Uh, just waited in the of that grave, but couldn't actually get an escape afterwards. Down for another third second. It's right now SGE are just just testing the waters. They're gonna push in and try to tell if the Anti Mage has buyback. He does. They're really gonna be super eager to expend it right now. They'll use the fortification instead. ADR does have an assault cuirass, so pushing onto this tower for SG. A little bit amplified here, not to mention that they have Lapota, the Nyx Assassin. Perfect lurker spot. Ready to counter shade Shadow Broom, but they do end up grabbing the Invoker. And they burst them down. The Scythe is not gonna do it. Now the BKB comes up on ADR. And the Circle of Monkeys here as well from Costa will shred the Bat Rider, drop the gem onto the floor. I hit the May. Oh, he's going to need some help right now. The damage is quite enough. There's no Boundless Strike. And now the Blink in Abyssal Blade onto the Monkey King. But all that armor is big much. They burn out the Anti Mage, and he's gonna die with no buyback. Oh no, if SG done it, they're gonna take down the Dazzle and the Clockwork immediately after. It's an ultra kill for Costa. These shows don't have buyback. That's gonna be at least two sets of racks. What the hell just happened in this game? They're just gonna go for the game. It's GG. That just happened. <laughs>